Hey guys, Blue Wizard here. Now, should you buy Transport Fever 2? Let's take a look. At its heart, Transport Fever 2 is an old school tycoon game. Your one aim is to make money and to use the tools at hand to help you to do so. The game is actually the third in the series. There is Train Fever, then Transport Fever, and now Transport Fever 2. I suspect brand recognition is why the Transport Fever name was kept this time round. The game is single player and comes with two game modes and new to the franchise, a map editor. It's available on Windows 7 and up or the Ubuntu flavor of Linux. In campaign, the game takes you through a series of scenarios teaching you the game mechanics. It includes cutscenes and a basic story. Let's take a quick look. Constantly creating amazing new inventions. Get involved in rapid technology. America, in the midst of the 19th century, in the Nevada Territory, where until recently only a handful of buffalo grazed, nowadays... Welcome to uncharted territory, newcomer. Wanna get rich? Then you're in just the right place. Gold rush fever holds sway in Virginia City. And you, you lucky jack. All you have to do is to find the mine. Get an overview and find out where the riches lie. Discover the entrance to the tunnel. What a promising claim. Even though only a few boulders have been mined so far, that's no reason to lose heart. You'll just have to dig deeper. You ought to get hold of some solid timber from the nearby forest, so that the... Now, there's got to be a small depot to park the horse-drawn carts, too. Open play is where the game excels, and the mode most players would likely play. You decide on the region, generate a map, or open a pre-created one, set your difficulty, set a starting year, maybe add some mods which extend the game and off you go. The game is completely open and you can do what you wish. The aim of this game mode is to build a transport empire. As you play, time and years will tick by and different types of vehicle will become available. Depending on the year, you can either set passenger or cargo routes up using horse and cart, bus, tram, truck, ship, train or plane. There are meant to be over 200 vehicles built into the game. Vehicles have a finite lifespan and will cost more to maintain as each year ticks by. You can replace vehicles whenever you wish. As time goes by, Towns will grow by themselves, but they will grow faster if you provide them with good passenger routes and fulfill their cargo demands. For instance, some towns require food. To provide this to them, you will set up a cargo route between a farm and a food processor, and then a route from the food processor to the town. Unlike previous games in this series, each town has two specific cargo requirements, and only these can help grow the town. When building routes, you can either use the roads already on the map or add your own infrastructure. Adding your own roads and train tracks will add maintenance costs in. The game mode has no end or competitors. You are playing against yourself with the single aim not to lose money. It is in theory possible to put yourself in a financial position that you cannot carry on. And that is meant to be part of the fun of this game mode. But is where the game lets itself down. In theory, it is possible to do that, but in practice thus far, I've not worried about cash at any point during my playthrough. I'm playing at a medium level and have found Transport Fever 2 infinitely easier than the other games in the series. 
There are other ways to enjoy this game mode, though. As with the previous incarnations of the game, you can switch off costs entirely and just build your dream railway network. If you wish to have a train set and haven't got the space, this game is great. As we touched on earlier, this game mode does allow modding. You can download user-created content that can change the game or add something to it. The previous Transport Fever game had thousands of assets that could be downloaded, such as extra engines, road types, track types, people, trees, buildings. It also allowed scripting that could change the game in some form, and I highly expect this new game to have just as many, if not more, over time. The other notable new feature of this game is the new region. Asia has been added, meaning you can now choose from either America, Europe and Asia when setting up your game map. The previous game had quite a few Asian mods, and so I suspect the game had a good Asian fan base, and so this makes sense for sales of the game in that region. This also now means Asian's mods can correctly be allocated to Asian region. As in previous games, you can choose to use any vehicle type in a map in a region if you choose. A new addition to the game is the map editor. I can see this becoming a game mode in itself where people will spend hours creating their own perfect custom maps. The series I'm playing right now is playing on a map I created in the editor. The editor feels very familiar using the same tools as the open mode. You can make hills, rivers, roads, add trees, bushes, and paint the map as desired. The paint tools are new and remarkably easy to use. You can paint fields, mud, and tarmac, for instance. There are many textures to choose from. Painting grass, if enabled in settings, will paint actual grass and not just the color green. So to the nitty gritty, should you buy the game? That was the question I posed at the beginning of the video. Well, if you played and enjoyed the previous games, you'll likely enjoy this one. It will have a familiar feeling. The map editor is a great addition. If you're new to the series, then it will depend on what you want from the game. If you're looking for a pure tycoon challenge, there may be better games out there. However, if you like train games and love the idea of building your favorite perfect network, then you'll likely love this game. The tycoon element a really nice little add-on rather than the fundamental aspect of the game in my opinion. It makes you think about the network you wish to build, making sure you build something in the realms of reality. I read the game for a couple weeks and in that time I've enjoyed it and that's all we can hope for in a game, something that you enjoy. If you buy the game let me know what you think in the comments and maybe I'll make a follow-up video in the future. Anyway guys, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, please press the like button. If you want to see more, please subscribe and if you press that ding dong bell button, you know what it does. Cheers guys, see you next time. Bye bye.